Warning, tempting kit video ahead. Do not watch if you sat with the missus. Go and sit in the shed instead. Hello everyone, hope everybody's okay and doing alright. As you can see, I've been very kindly sent this One Leaf Commander NV100 night vision unit for a bit of a review and a test. Thank you to Masson at One Leaf for sending me this. Now there's lots of videos out there on the internet about this already, so this isn't going to be a mega full in-depth view. Uh, of the uh, functions and everything else what I'm going to do is I'm going to review it as a comparison to its competitor which is the Pard 007 now you'll have uh, hopefully if you've watched any of my videos in the last year or so you'll have seen me using the Pard um, through obviously through the scope uh, doing the filming and the footage uh, so I've had quite a few experiences with it and um, this is my take on the one leaf versus the pard because if you're in the market for something like this these are the two that you'll probably be considering so at the lower end of the cost spectrum now currently the one leaf is uh about 180 to 100 pounds cheaper than the pard 007 um now that in itself obviously is a bonus in, in this day and age or in any day and age really but especially now so is it a uh, hundred pounds less better if you'll uh, pardon the english um is it worth getting one over the pod this is my opinion yours may differ um, but we'll go through some of the things i've found using the pod that i think that the one leaf improves upon little things but they do add up and then we'll make a decision at the end i'll show you a few things that i've found through using it the best way to do things shortcuts that sort of thing and hopefully this video is useful for you if you're thinking about getting one now i was at the british shooting show and i spoke to tony at uh, sportsman gun center and he did say to me that the we are the only country that still gets this pard unit. Um, it's been discontinued everywhere else in favor of the new version, which is about 200 pounds more. So we are the only ones to get this. It didn't say how long we would still be getting it for, because uh, obviously it's still being shipped in at the minute. Maybe they'll keep making them forever, I don't know. But um, that's the that's the uh, situation with the pard. I think it was Sportsman Gun Center um, insisted on them to continually making it for us as a, as a budget option okay so we'll leave that to one side for now here is how it comes in the box uh, the one leaf um, mine's been sent to me with three different adapters when you order yours you'll have to choose the size of the adapter in millimeters so obviously we've got the uh, 48 the 42 and the 45 depending which scope you use and it's obviously handily written on the side. So I've got all three with me here. You also get a little cloth bag for it. It comes with it to keep it in, which is nice. And as it comes in the box, you get the rubber eyepiece. You get a spare eyepiece, um, which looks like it's slightly longer. Um, you also get... A 32 gig memory card with it, which is a nice touch, so it's ready to go. A Samsung battery and a roll of black tape, which we'll come back to in a bit. Now that's for padding out your eyepiece on your scope so the adapters fit on better and give you a tighter fit. And also to stop it scratching your scope um, at the ocular end. Now you also get a USB cable for connecting it to uh, your computer and you get uh, some Allen keys and some spare O-rings. Now the O-rings are quite quite handy to have because the O-rings go 
just there around the eyepiece where the bayonet fits and they give you a bit of cushioning where it fits on the um, adapter and gives you a bit like a seal and a, and a bit of um, like I say cushioning to make it lock tighter I did find the one on the pod did wear out after a while obviously keep taking it on and off so that o-ring goes just there if you can see it just around that little ring there right now there's a few things that I found with it that I think makes it better than the pod 007 and this is through my experience the first one is, and to me, this is probably <laughs> probably one of the most important. It might not seem important, but I, I found it. It was something when I was using the pod for the first time, thinking, why don't they do it like that? And this does. When you're looking through the eyepiece, obviously, like when I'm on the farm, sat waiting for a crow to land on the wire, it's in standby mode. So when you turn it on, for the, you turn it on and it starts up. And then just like the pod, you press the power button once and it turns the screen off in there to save the battery, but it's still in standby mode. And then what you do is to energize it, you just press the button once and it comes back to life. Now, when you're waiting for a, an animal, a crow, if you're hunting or whatever, on the pod, to start it recording, you have to press and hold the record button for about two or three seconds before it starts to record. There's a few times when I've been wait when I've been waiting to shoot and then you've had like a crow land on the wire and it's sort of looking down at it, eyeing you up and everything and you're sort of slowly trying to make your way over and you've got to press and hold it and you think you've held it for long enough, then you lift the rifle to your eye and you look and you realise it's not recording, so you have to start you have to come back and press and hold it again. On the one leaf you press and you just click it to start recording and then you click it to stop recording which is exactly how it should be because when you're about to record chances are you haven't got much time to mess about because on the pod if you click the button it takes a photograph if you hold the button it starts recording on the one leaf you click it once it starts recording if you want to take a photograph you press and hold it while it's recording and now to me that is how it should be because I'm not sure of anybody who wants to take a photograph through the scope but everybody wants to video so to me the best way of doing it is to one button to record hold for a photo now the other thing as well is when you switch it off say if it's in day mode when you switch it off when you switch it back on it'll be in day mode. If you switch it off in night mode and switch it back on, it'll come back on in night mode. The pod will come back on in whichever mode you select in the menu for it to boot up in. I know it's a little thing, but it can be an annoyance. When, if you're out on the night, you know, on rabbits on the night and um, you go back to the car for a cup of tea, turn your scope off, switch it back on. I have mine come on in day mode because I use it all the time with my guns at the range and that, it comes back on in day mode. So you've got to press and hold it to put it in night mode and then get it you know, going again. So it remembers what it was switched off in when you switch it back on, which is quite a handy thing. Now this does actually fit pod adapters. Um, if you'll see here, let's clear this away. Clear this out of the way a so. sec. Here's my rapid, my 20 cal rapid, and it actually has a pod adapter on the scope. Now the, the one leaf clicks straight onto pod adapters. Now that's handy because it means that if you wanted to get hold of another adapter, you can buy a pod one because there's a lot more of them knocking about on the second hand market. And availability so it gives you that option um, to use pod adapters with it the only one you can't use with it if you've got one of these this is the very good eagle vision mount on the one leaf 
if you look, the battery pack sticks out two or three millimeters more than on the pod. So the one leaf hits this beveled edge before it engages. So you can't use these with the one leaf like you can with the pod. It's just that little bit of extra distance on the battery adapter and that makes it sort of collide. So you can't use them. Now, as regards these scope adapters, coming back to that roll of tape from earlier, I've found the best way of using them is not to use this, is to go on eBay and buy some of these. Now these are 3D printed scope adapters. And what they do is they go inside your um, uh, pod adapter or your one leaf scope adapter and then they sit in there and they pack out um, onto your scope. And then when you tighten it up, sorry, I got it the wrong end. <laughs> when you tighten it up, um, it, because it's got a slit in it, it, it slowly clamps closed onto the scope. Because it's a cylinder shape, it, it has a nice even pressure on the scope and keeps the adapter absolutely square. So, if you're looking at these, you want to go on eBay and search for um, pod uh, shims, 3D printed shims or whatever, and you'll find them on there, different thicknesses you can buy. And they fit lovely in your uh, adapter. In fact, that's what I've got on the uh, Rapid. If you see on the Rapid, I've got one in there. And there, look, and that keeps it perfectly square on the scope because the tape's awkward to use um it's it's not impossible but you have to put a nice even layer all the way around the scope um ocular end because if it's slightly uneven when you're clamping it up it will get you'll get a bit of movement and also if you build up too much of a layer of tape obviously it's, it's quite soft so you will get a bit of movement with the uh when you you know when it's in your gun bag and you take it out the bag and you put the scope uh, put the uh, one leaf on so that's a nice touch that it comes with that but um, if you can try and find the uh, adapters on uh, eBay these these are much better or even if you could cut or get a thin piece of drain pipe cut a section of that cut a slot in it and use that instead it makes a much nicer spacer um, obviously because it's um, a, 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 a consistent thickness all the way on the wall so it works a lot better the other thing and um, which could be a deal breaker as well is the pod you're not supposed to charge the battery in it it tells you not to do it in the manual you're only supposed to use the charging port the port sorry the usb port for um access to the memory card on a computer the one leaf allows you to charge the battery in the unit so there's nothing else to buy because you get given the um, usb cable so you plug that in and uh, you you can plug it into an iphone adapter or a usb adapter in your car plugged into your cigarette lighter and you can charge it directly from the USB port. So you don't need a separate power adapter, which is very handy. And also you can use this via the USB cable with an external battery pack. So you don't even need a battery in to run it. You take the battery can come out and be on charge somewhere. If you, if you, if you're let, you know, if you're in an emergency and you, um, you realize that you've not charged the battery, you can grab a little power pack, plug it in, and uh, run it off that which is excellent because it does mean like say you haven't got to buy an extra uh, battery pack now this does come with a laser built in um i'll just switch it on if you look there there's a little hole which is your windage adjustment and there's a slot there which is your elevation adjustment and that's why you get the little allen key in the packet with it and that goes down in there and that zeroes your laser if you want to use the laser for anything um it's quite a bright one actually um quite nice 
I think the early pods had a laser and then they disabled it. Um, some UK law to do with the power of it. I think there was a bit of a dispute. Um, but this one's fine. So you can just switch it on and off the button on the front. And you can use that for, you know, a bit of, if you want to use it for like plinking in the garden or even if you're a ratting or something, you can use the laser if you want. It's there as an option. Okay. So for my mind, I would say that it's definitely one of the things you want to consider getting over the pod purely because it does offer a few extra features and little subtleties that work really well compared to the pod. And obviously then you'll also be saving sort of 80 to 100 pounds, which obviously is important nowadays. Um, there's little things like it has slow motion record built in as well. So you can go in the menus and um, you can just set it so it automatically records slow motion. I think it's two, six and eight, uh, two, four and eight times slow motion in the menus. Um, it's got the full white balance. Um, you can even shoot, uh, film in sepia or black and white as well if you want to. Really okay, well here it is fitted to my Paul Short tuned HW97K. Um, I'm using it on this gun because I've only got about 10 yards to shoot. And the MTC copper head scope, which is superb. Um, side focuses down to sort of six or seven yards. I've got sun shining in my eyes there, so that's why there's a bit of lens flare. There's my back garden south facing. The gun's actually not zeroed yet until I get it to the range on Wednesday. It's somewhere near. And you can just see how it records nicely through the scope. And now we're switching to night vision. I took the scope off, so I'm not waving a gun around the neighbourhood. Uh, this is just a view over the back gardens, um, once I can get it focused. But that chimney is about 50 yards away. As you can see, it's well illuminated. Any rabbits at that distance will be lit up like a Christmas tree. So it's got a lovely clear night view on it as well, the illuminator. That's about 70 yards to that uh, chimney, about 85, 90 yards to that one. No problem with the illuminator whatsoever. Um, you wouldn't need a separate illuminator with it. There's more than enough. There you go. That's the view in, in the evenings, in the dark. Okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate the uh, power bank feature now. So what we'll do is we'll take the battery out. It's a nice um, Samsung battery you get with it. So there's no battery in it. I'm going to plug the USB adapter in. And now I can turn it on. And as you can see, it's actually running off the off the uh, power bank with no battery pack in it, with no battery in it. Sorry, and that'll run for. I mean, that's a ten thousand milliamp battery pack. It'll run for probably a day on that thing. Um, so it's always a nice option to keep that with you if you're on an all night ratting session. Um, then if you get yourself a power bank, you ain't got to worry about the batteries at all in it. Um, it works really well. Our recording time on this is um, in full HD, which is 1080. It records for 5 hours 40 minutes, I believe it said on the display. Um, and uh, in 720 mode, it will record for about 11 hours on the, on the supplied 32 gig card. It's a really nice touch giving you a 32 gig card with it. It's just, as soon as it's out of the box, it's ready to go. Um, it's a lovely little unit and uh, I can thoroughly recommend it, to be honest. I think it's going to be my go-to recorder uh, from now on, which is purely <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the single, one of the main reasons is the instant record button on it, uh, which is something the pod should always have had on it, which it doesn't. Um, and there's another little annoyance I've just realised I've seen actually, which I've done in the past, is if you look on these units, the pod has its power button on there, 
the one leaf has its power button down here. If you're using one of these and you've got a cap on with a peak, I've done it before where my peak has actually switched them part off because as you put your head up to it, the peak hits the power button and turns it off and you end up turning the hat round and putting the peak over the back of your head. Um, now this won't do that and also because it's shaped slightly squarer, um, it has a, a, a longer throw on it at the front so you can shoot this with a peak cap on. If you'll notice on the pod, this is just my personal preference, I've actually folded the eyepiece over uh, out of the way because I don't like these pig's ears. Um, and instead of ripping it off or unscrewing it or whatever, um, all I do is just fold them over like this. And um, you end up with an eyepiece you can just put your eye up against. Um, and uh, it works a bit like one of the MTC Connect scopes or uh, an Air Max Touch where you put the rubber up against your eyebrow and you can see perfectly through the scope. Um, and that's how I like to shoot mine. Some people I know have sliced them off with a knife or unscrewed them, uh, I think on the party they glued on. Well, these give you a spare one, so I think this one comes off a bit easier on here, but I've not took it off. Uh, but I just like to fold mine over, gets it out of the way and um, stops you damaging the unit. Like that. I um, just don't like the, I'm just not keen on the pig's ear. I never have been on the other scripts I've used. It's got a lovely long uh, infrared throw on it, out to about 300 meters, sub 12 air gun in. It's, it's perfectly fine. You don't need an external illuminator. You'll use this one, it's perfectly fine. Um, as I say, absolutely lovely unit. Well worth the money, I'd say. It's about as cheap as it'll get, surely with something like this. Um, the little advice on using it, um, if you'll notice on my Rapid, um, I actually, on, on this is all my rifles, like my Airwolf, I actually set the scope forward. Uh, this is a Tyrolean Rapid, so there's not much, um, not much other places to put your head and cheek other than on the pad. So I actually use, um, mount it forward and I always fit the um, adapter on so my eye is sat right when I'm shooting basically makes it one long scope um, and I but does that just means that I have to use the um, one leaf when I'm shooting on the range or if I'm just plinking or whatever whatever I'm doing I've always got to use this because the scope's too far forward otherwise but it means I'm not hanging off the back of the rifle so as I've decided to use this setup as my shooting setup, I've made the decision to mount the scope forward rather than hanging off the back of the gun, and which is obviously especially, like I say, important with the, uh, with the Tyrolean Rapid because it puts everything where you need it. Okay, hopefully that's proved useful. And you're making a decision. I will say a big thank you to uh, Masson for sending me this. Absolutely superb unit. And I'll be using this going forward. I say purely for some of the functions in it that work really well. Um, and it's just such a well-made unit. Rock solid. Really quick start up on it. And just some of the little features on it for me. I mean, it has six levels of infrared. Whereas the pod only has three, so you can fine tune your infrared better. So, you know, perhaps you could save a bit of battery life with that. Um, and this is a 12 millimeter version, which is a one times magnification unit. There's also a 16 millimeter version, um, which lets you, it zooms in slightly. It's probably more for longer range shooting. If you're going to shoot sub 12 air gunning, uh, you want the 12 millimeter one. And then it doesn't magnify the image through the scope. What you see through the scope normally is what you see through this. Um, it's a lovely unit, lovely clear optics on it. Nice and easy focusing. So it's set up really well. It's even got a, a, an earpiece in it. You can plug an ear, a speaker into it when you're playing back videos. Um, it's really well made. Lovely unit, really solid, nicely finished. Really pleased with it, to be honest.
I will say that now, if I was buying one, uh, compared to the pod, I would buy the one leaf. And like I said, purely because um, it's cheaper and it's uh, it's got some features that I like over the pod as well. Um, the only thing I will say with it is when you switch it to night mode, it automatically switches on the infrared lamp. Um, so you've always got to have it on. If you want to use an external illuminator with it, you will the, the illuminator will be on on the one leaf. Um, there's no way of turning it off in night mode. Um, well, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I can't do it. I've tried doing it through the menus and I can't find it. Maybe that'll get, get addressed in a future firmware update. Um, but um, when you switch it to night mode, really, you want it to be zero infrared and then go one to six. Because if you use an external illuminator, like I say, you'd be running the battery down on this. Um, but having said that, especially on this 12 millimeter version, there's no need to use an external illuminator. You would use this one with the focus on it. You can get it to a spot uh, right out to a wide angle beam. Um, it's lovely, really clear, sharp, nice recording. Um, if you have a look on YouTube, you'll find uh, Johnny at Air Rifle Pest Control and Andy at a and Bushcraft and Hunting. They've done some really nice videos with it, showing you how it works. And Steve at Air Gunology has done one as well. And um, it's gone down really well, to be honest. I mean, value for money wise, I don't think you can beat it. Um, it's made really well, like I say. You just have to choose your scope adapter when you are um, when you're purchasing it online from their website. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, you have to decide which one you want from a drop down menu, and then it gives you the um, gives you the one that you order with the scope. Obviously, I've been sent these purely to. Um, for demonstration purposes but everything in the box is what you need there's nothing else you need other than a rifle and a scope to put it on <laughs> um, yeah big thank you to uh, Masson and I'll be out with this on the rapid and get a video up soon and get out on the bunnies and get using it okay thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon bye for now